Hi and welcome to lesson 20, which is our final lesson of DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association's free QGIS course for beginners to intermediates. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at interpolation and we're actually going to be using weather stations and we're going to be looking at the minimum temperature from various weather stations around Montenegro for today, which is the 15th of May. This is the final lesson in our course. But as I said in yesterday's lesson, if the interest is there, then DMAD will run a third course to help people during the pandemic. If this is the case, please do let us know. Please just drop us a comment if you're watching on YouTube or go to the contact us page on our website if you're watching on our website. And please remember to like, subscribe and most importantly, share all of these videos so that we can reach and help people just like you. Okay, so in today's lesson, we're just going to load some layer data in. It's today's weather data, minimum and maximum temperatures, and it's taken from a number of weather stations around Montenegro. I'm going to add our delimited text layer. So layer, add layer, add delimited text layer. And you'll notice that I've just turned off all of our water data um, and our contour data just because it's a bit, the map's going to get a bit messy otherwise. So I'm going to browse for my file. This is just a, it says it's a Microsoft Excel file, but it's just a standard CSV or comma separated values file. And that means that um, our file, each piece of information in our file is just separated by a comma. So we, if we were to have a, if I click this, it will show you, we can see that we've got bar and then we've got a minimum temperature and maximum temperature. And then yeah, these are all separated by commas. So if I click that, then Excel, uh, sorry, uh, GIS can sort the data as it wants. Um, one thing that we really need to be aware with, aware of, um, is that in the UK, US, and several other systems, we use the decimal point as uh, our decimal separator. But in some European systems. Uh, they use the comma as the decimal separator and obviously if we've got the comma as a decimal separator then that's going to split this into um, into two different columns so our latitude is only going to show 42 uh, and our longitude is only going to show 19 which is obviously something that we we want to avoid so hopefully that makes sense to everybody um, in that case, we need to make sure that our decimal separator is selected as comma uh, and we need to make sure that our um, regular expression delimiters, so um, what breaks up our data is something like a semicolon. So I've changed that and I obviously don't have the op option, well I do have the option but I have no commas. And I've just added that data. Okay, so now you can see we've got these weather stations and I'm just gonna make them big red dots so you can see them a bit clearer. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the labels as well. We're gonna use the expression dialog again. So if field one is just a name and I'm gonna use the concatenate expression, then add a new line, which is the backslash n. Remember, this is the Unicode expression for adding a new line. Uh, and then I'm just going to add min, which is our minimum temperature. So that's the, the name of our um, minimum temperature in our attribute table. Click OK. Click Apply. And I'm just going to add a buffer as well. You know I love buffers. So hit 0.6 and apply just to make everything easier to read and you can see that we have our stations, a lot more stations on the coast so they run from Herzegnavia in the north right the way down to Olsen and then we have the capital Pogoritsa here and a couple of other stations and unsurprisingly as we get further away from the coast into sort of the mountain areas the temperatures drop in especially in uh, Kolashin here which is um, an area which has got a couple of ski resorts, it's right up in the mountains, um, so 
unsurprisingly this has a lower minimum temperature for today um, and what we're going to look at today is how we can do interpolation um, we're going to use IDW which stands for inverse distance weighting interpolation it's beyond the scope of this course to go into the different sorts of interpolation but IDW is um, quite a, a well used one and it's just a quite a solid choice um, so I've got this found this in the processing toolbox uh, if you don't have this processing toolbox here just go to processing and click toolbox and it should appear then just search for IDW or go into interpolation um, for our vector layer we're obviously going to select temperature and we're going to select minimum in this case then I just have to hit this green plus button and that adds our vector layer in here as for our extents well I'm going to use uh, select canvas extent on uh, so, sorry select extent on canvas and that just lets me draw around the shape I want all of Montenegro so I'm just going to make sure that's in there uh, and you see it gives me this output raster size of 19 rows and 21 columns well actually that's not particularly big it means we're only going to be dividing Montenegro into 19 parts so I'm just going to up this to, to 50 uh, and you'll see the columns changes automatically as well um, obviously the more we break up our rows and columns the smaller our pixel sizes are going to get um, but the more uh, so the, the more fine scale high resolution data we're going to get but it only gets to a certain point because we've only got so many stations here to take data from and the more we divide this up the bigger our files are going to be so you need to find a balance there so I'm going to hit run and you'll see that we get this this sort of map across uh, Montenegro uh, it's not particularly useful I'm just going to move this down below my temperature um, and what I'm going to do is I'm also just going to cut this so if you remember we did this before you just go raster extraction and clip raster by mask layer obviously our input layer is going to be the interpolated layer we've just created and our mask layer is going to be uh, Montenegro so I hit run and I'm just going to remove our interpolated layer now because we don't need it okay and we now have this raster of our temperature files um, sorry temperature data over the top of Montenegro and it's not particularly easy to interpolate like that so what I'm going to do I'm just going to change it from single band grey to single band pseudo colour the colour ramp I'm using is spectral um, and I've done this recently so it's remembered my choices but you'll have to come down and choose spectral and then I just want to invert the colour ramp because generally we associate blue with the colder temperatures and red with our warmer temperatures so I'm going to click apply and OK and now it's a lot easier for us to interpolate um, we don't really have a lot of data here so this is sort of uh, a bit of guesswork that uh, our um, IDW models come up with here uh, but you can see that we've got this very obvious cold layer here and then we've got the warmer regions here um, which are unsurprising because we've got a range of mountains that run, runs here which is sort of the orangey bit between um, Montenegro, uh, sorry, Bar and Pogorica and uh, yeah along the coast we generally have the warmer temperatures okay that's great just move that up there um, and what we can also do is we can just add some contours to make it more obvious uh, and as I said in yesterday's lesson I think contours are not just used for elevation and we can use them in this case for temperature so I'm just going to add make it a 1 uh, I'm going to call it temp and we're going to use this clip mask because uh, that's the, the layer we're using at the moment 
and just add some contours as well and this just makes it even easier I change these to a different color because they're sort of clashing with the the orange below so I'm just going to change this to uh, a gray color click apply and OK well don't click OK and then I'm just going to add some labels as well so I just want the temp value okay and now we can see the the approximate areas on the contours of where where um, our different sort of temperature zones so here we have 17 to 16 degrees uh, here we have 17 to 18 so a lot of this area is in the 17 to 18 uh, and then obviously as we get to towards bar we have this sort of 2021 20, zone so I hope you can see that using the interpolation is relatively simple process actually um, and we can get quite a lot of information by interpolating between our different points um, obviously this model is going to be more accurate the more stations that we have so if, say we had a station here this is going to completely change our, our model and we re need to be really aware of things on the edge so on the edge of our our extent so here it's given us these values of, of sort of 16 um, but we actually don't really have that much data at all to base that on so this is clearly going to be less accurate than say this area here where we have four stations quite close together likewise up here so just a couple of things to be aware of um, and that really brings us to the end of, of this course um, I hope you found it useful uh, I hope you've got a little bit out of it um, I've really enjoyed teaching it like I said before if you want a third course then please just let us know drop me an email or just drop a comment in in the comments under the video if you're watching on YouTube and um, yeah we can do that but it is an awful lot of effort to put these courses um, together and we are doing it on top of our normal workload um, so we're only going to do it if people do want the courses thank you to the people that have got in touch so far um, and yeah thank you for completing the course as we said for the last course there is going to be a certification for this course and in order to do that if you just send um, proof it can just be as two screenshots from uh, lesson 19 and lesson 20 just showing that you understand the different um, methodologies we've used this time so lesson 90 was the one that that 19 was the one that showed all of the the contours and the different areas and our potential habitat and things and this one obviously shows our interpolation so if you can show that that would be brilliant and um, yeah thank you so much for taking part in the lessons Please, if you've enjoyed it, like, um, subscribe to the videos because we will be bringing more out at some stage, if not now. Um, and most importantly, share this so as many people can learn these techniques as possible. All right. Thank you very much.